Welcome to the Furlough Capital Real Estate Podcast, where we dive into the intricacies of passive real estate investing. And our mission is to equip people to invest wisely in both property and residence so that together we can build our wealth while improving communities. I'm James, and this is my wife, Jessie. I'm here, and I feel like we've arrived. We've arrived? We've arrived at, a, at adulthood. Okay. Our daughter needs braces. Oh, yeah. It's like, is... I, I just, I remember playing cash flow. And like, you get the kid and you're like, ah, like you pull the braces card and it's just like, ah. Yeah, but in the game, the braces card is only $2,000. <laughs> that's true. In real that's, life, it's a little bit more. <laughs> three times more. So that's exciting. Yeah. Well, yeah. we're adults. Woo. Yay. I just got to, I got to flip another property. That's, that's all right. Yeah. That's all. We'll but get there. We'll get there. Exactly. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> yeah. That's been, that's been interesting. Trying to figure out. How to get her to also have some ownership in this process while fully yeah. knowing she can't pay for it. And oh, for yeah, sure. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. It's all right. They were there. We're there. But today, what I want to talk about are some common mistakes that beginners make when passively investing in real estate hmm. and then give some practical steps that they can take to so they don't make the mistake. help them through that beginner stage. Yeah. Yeah, Makes exactly. Sense. And I specifically thought of four big ones mm -hmm. that people make. Okay. Um, I don't know if you looked at my notes ahead of time. I glanced. So I was going to ask, what do you think are some <laughs> beginner mistakes? Um, so they don't do their pretend. research. Ah, uh, yes. They just throw their money willy-nilly at yeah. people. So the way I would phrase <laughs> that is there's a lack of due diligence. Yeah. They, they get sucked into it, right? They don't mm -hmm. actually, like, like you just said, they don't research the property mm -hmm. or the real estate market. And so the way to do that is, well to download my guide of 196 <laughs> questions. That's a good way and, to do it. But the idea is to look at all the different parts of the deal. Look at the sponsor, look at the property itself, look at the market, look at mm -hmm. the construction plan, look at the financing, look at the pro forma, look at the lending piece of it, look at the legal side, like actually look at it before being like, yes, I'm all in. Yeah. Now you can be like, yeah, I'm interested. I'm interested. I would like mm -hmm. to commit, but before you fully do it, like mm -hmm. you want to look at all of that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's doing your due diligence piece as a passive investor. Yeah, I think that's a huge mistake that um, that's to make. You want to you you one for one. Want to keep trying? Um, what are some other ones. I'm trying to remember what I read, but I I think one of them was like uh, investing emotionally. Yeah, which or like, is very similar, but I think well, it's also kind different, of yeah right like so. It's saying it's exactly what it sounds like, right? Like you just, you fall in. So one of my favorite quotes is a Dolph de Ruse quote mm -hmm. that says, you don't fall in love with the property, fall in love with the deal. Mm. And his whole thing is like the, the house, the property doesn't matter. The numbers, that's what matters. Mm. Fall in love with that. Mm -hmm. And that's something we talk a lot about with beginning investors just yeah. in general. Dude, don't fall in love with the property. Mm. And I think that happens with passive investors as well. It's a cool story. It's a cool narrative. Heck. I try to write really cool stories and na narratives and pull out the interesting facets, the story behind the property mm -hmm. that has nothing to do with the property, <laughs> right? It yep. doesn't matter. But I know people it's like, compelling. you fall in love with those stories. Yeah. So I tell them and they're genuinely interesting and cool. And people sure. want to know how, how did you get in, like, yeah. how to get here? Why are they selling? Right? Mm -hmm. That's always the question. But I think people make that mistake of the emotional investing. And I, I think I've, I I interpreted it slightly different as I was like, as, as I was glancing through that list and yeah, okay. <laughs> how I read it or, or what, what resonated in my brain was more like um, <laughs> the motivation behind like wanting to invest was this like, oh, I don't know, almost this, this, this rush of like, I need, I, I need a source of income or like, I just, I just need to put my money oh. somewhere, you know? And it's like, I don't right. care where I put it. I just need to put it somewhere, you know, which is just like, okay, it's not necessarily like the best Right. way to yeah. proceed with passive investing like, yeah okay that could have yeah yeah <laughs> i feel like that could be a mistake if yes yes like, could it's similar it's similar yeah to yeah that's fair that's the, fair the deal one and yeah all right number three another mm -hmm. mistake that beginner passive investors make is overestimating returns <laughs> I yeah. think this happens all the time <laughs> and ha I have fallen victim to this mm -hmm. one where I get told like, hey, the plan is to do X. We're expecting to get a 15% IRR. Cool. Mm -hmm. They go, but there's a possibility that this other thing might happen, in which case we'll goose it up to a 25% IRR. Mm -hmm. And I go, woo, 25% IRR. That sounds great. I'm in. 
And then the project gets going and they go, yeah, so it's actually going to, like, that magical thing didn't happen, so we're back down to 15. I'm like, oh, man. Okay. Or the timeline, right? This could be anywhere between, again, I fell, I fell with this one. We're like, well, this could be a three-year project, but there's a chance that someone's going to buy it super early, and this is only like a six-month project. Oh, dude, 25% IRR six-month project? I'm in. And then, it, then that six month, oh yeah, that thing fell through, so can't do it. I'm like, ah, see, I I'm feel like that years. is an optimist dilemma. I know, I do. Because as a pessimist, time. I'm like, mm hmm, okay, it's probably going to be more than three years. Or I'm like, 25%, no way. So, like, we're going, what's so, the bare bones? <laughs> I know, which for me is like the way that you counteract that is to say, like, look, when they tell you a best case scenario, for the most part, ignore that. Yeah. And say if, if a worst case is still good, awesome. Yeah. Like that genuinely needs to be the way that you think about it. And you got to remind yourself and I got to remind myself to do that. Yeah. Requires some sort of discipline. The fourth really big one that I thought of is just a lack of diversification. Hmm. I think is, is a newbie type of mistake. They've, is that an investor mistake or a sponsor mistake or? No, it's a, it's a passive investor mistake. Hmm. Like you say, I don't know, let's just say you've got $200,000 to mm -hmm. invest. And you go, I'm all in on all 200,000 on this oh, one on this property. Because yeah. you want to okay. like, because you're all excited about it and it's got sure. like really good returns and all that stuff. Sure. I think as much as I would, as a sponsor would love for you to give me all of your money, <laughs> um, I don't think that's necessarily a wise thing hmm. to do for someone who's new, still trying to figure yeah. it out. Instead, I think, which eventually be one of my steps is like, nah, spread that sucker out. Mm. Like do the minimums and it's okay. Mm -hmm. Get to know what it's like to work with this sponsor and this sponsor and this sponsor or for this type of deal or this type of deal. Get a sense for what it is that you really like. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's, yeah, you just don't diversify. Mm. That could be a problem. So those are the four, I mean, that's like, those are four really big ones. I'm sure that there's a lot more and if I spent sure. more time thinking of it, I could. Mm -hmm. But I really think that idea like you're not doing your due diligence Instead, you are basing it off of your emotions, how mm -hmm. it feels. And part of that is you're overestimating the returns, mm -hmm. not looking at them like, uh, really, what is the worst case mm -hmm. scenario? What are the risks here? And then finally, because of all that, you're not diversifying. You're mm -hmm. just going all in on this one property, which could turn out great, honestly. Mm -hmm. But I don't think you should. Yeah. So I think those are some big mistakes. Okay, so we've done that. Now the question is, what are some steps that you can take to overcome mm -hmm. those issues above and beyond kind of like the little things that we just talked about? Mm -hmm. So the first one, ginormous, I bet you can guess what it is. Uh, do your due diligence. Well, it's a broader <laughs> umbrella than that. Uh, Educate yourself. Oh. Yeah. Uh, just the, so, it's similar. Well, I think that's like, let's just say broader L envelope right mm. so it's not just d educate yourself before a deal happens okay. learn what is the due diligence to do what are those types oh, of things I, uh -huh. okay. that i need to do um you want to understand like market trends just in general mm. for this place where i'm investing where is it and you don't have to be an expert in it mm -hmm. but you should have an idea is the market going up going down what's employment like what's population mm. like like you should have some of that like understand just out of curiosity do you like when you're sending out your monthly newsletters or updates or do you include information like that it's nice to know that you read those thoroughly um when i send them to you mm -hmm. uh, i sometimes do i don't do okay. it every single month just because well i do read them but i haven't noticed like a, a trend <laughs> of including that kind of stuff but i'm like that would make it super easy for a passive investor to be like yeah nice i can rely I, on this source of information i've i will sometimes include some economic stuff hmm. um i generally when i have a specific deal will include some economic stuff okay. in in just within where that, for that particular area. is a good resource to learn about your market um hmm, good question so from a just like from city standpoints i think uh data USA.io or datausio something mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. um, or usdata.io oh shoot something like that uh, is a very good website where you can type in any sort of city any municipality and it's got all the census data aggregated in a very cool right. looking way it's I use resource. it all the time on my stuff I just take screenshots of their stuff because it's great link it yeah. somewhere um, I could try <laughs> and then um, I think too, just for like general market data, oftentimes like real estate agents love to do that mm. kind of stuff. Like I'm subscribed to a couple of newsletters that give me economic updates okay. just in general. But those are often like uh, national level, which mm. isn't super helpful. Mm -hmm. 
because it doesn't like real estate's all local. Yeah. So I think that's that's a harder one to do. Um, it's something I don't know. I might be able to. That's a good suggestion to create more like, hey, here's what's happening in these specific cities. Mm-hmm. Um, that could be cool. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Um, but yeah, those are. I mean, that's where my head run. goes. Is like, yeah, yeah, it would be good to get that information. I have no idea where I would look for that. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, Google, that's your, uh, yeah. that's your starting spot yep. for stuff. That's what I would do. Uh, the next one is financial literacy. Hmm. I'm not saying you need to become a financial whiz, but you should be able to look at a uh, an income statement, mm-hmm. look at a balance sheet, and just understand, especially the income statement. What's the money coming in? What's the money coming out? Yep. Do those trends look similar? Like Again, you don't have to be an expert, but you should kind of understand how they work. Yeah. And you should understand some of the key terms like return on investment and cash on cash, yeah. um, IRR, internal rate of return, those kind of things. I do have emails that teach on all that stuff because yep. um, I think it's important. I think there's, you need to have <clears throat> some tax knowledge as well <clears throat> because that definitely plays into it. What about depreciation and, and how are you affected as a passive investor? Mm. What about K-1s versus 1099s when you get mm-hmm. those? I think those are good things. And that's the kind of thing where it's like, maybe just talk to your tax guy or find mm-hmm. someone and just say, hey, I'm thinking about investing in this. What are some things I need to think about? Yeah. I think you're good. Um, I think you need to get good at risk assessment hmm. and and just understanding what are different risks of investing in a property and and so you look for a sponsor who talks about them. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the kind of thing where you just want, you want to get good at like thinking those things through. Because honestly, as sponsors, I hate talking about risk stuff. Like, oh, this isn't fun. <laughs> it could happen. But you have but to. But it's good to know that they're and, thinking about it correct. and planning for it. And, and what they're doing to mitigate it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I in my stuff, I always include a risk section. And, okay. And I Try to be fair yeah. about it. Yeah. I don't try to be doom and gloom. I try to be fair. Um, <laughs> My, I think I, if I were to create, like, a report, I think it would be, like, too much risk. <laughs> <laughs> and then, okay, here's the upside. Yeah, that'd be interesting. To have We'd you need to balance each part. other out. <laughs> I think another thing that's really important is you develop your own investment strategy mm. in the sense that, like, what are you going for? Are you going for cash flow? Are you mm. going for appreciation? Sure. And, like, yeah, what is it that you want? to get out of this is it long term is it short term all that stuff sure i think it's super important to agree on and i think the last thing before i get to my other things is uh you just want to develop a a patience and long-term perspective Hmm. that's the thing about real estate it's very rare that things are quick turn Mm -hmm. it's more like wealth is created over a very long horizon now you might do a bunch of deals within there but it's a long-term horizon yeah especially if you're doing a syndication that's a five to seven year deal If you're doing a short-term loan, yeah, okay, fine. That's three to nine months. But mm-hmm. still, like, yeah, you want to have that long-term perspective on things. Mm-hmm. Um, I also think practical steps for beginners, do some sort of networking. Get to know some mm-hmm. sponsors, get on their email list, start reading their stuff. Mm-hmm. I've got an email list. <laughs> you should get on it. <laughs> and uh, just start start to take it in. Okay. I think that's important. If there's a local real estate investment group, mm-hmm. go there. Check it out. Yeah. Ask, Ask questions. questions. Oh, yeah. man, it's great. Most importantly, talk to the guy who's leading the group. Mm-hmm. That's the guy who's connected and knows a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, great way to do it. I used to be that guy. I'm no longer that guy. Someone else does it. <laughs> um, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> uh, we've already talked about this, but I think it's start small, mm-hmm. right? Start with smaller investments. Build your confidence. Build your experience with it before you really jump all in on stuff. Mm-hmm. And then I think the other thing to remember is you just want to monitor it. You want to stay up on it, um, which you're a little bit at the at the whims of the sponsor and mm-hmm. how often they report with you. But like when they send an email, read it. Yeah. If they call, call them back. Or if you don't hear from them, like reach out. Right. Which is. Be proactive. What I've had to do. It's quite annoying. But you got to do it because I want to monitor it. I want to see where I'm at. Right. And. uh, You shouldn't just set it and walk away. (laughs) Correct. Yes. Be involved. Yeah. And again, it doesn't have to be a crazy amount. Right. As a matter of fact, you can't be involved with it a lot. But yeah, you just want to know what's going on and ask questions. Mm -hmm. Be interested. Yeah. I think it's the way that I would say it. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I don't think I'm missing anything on how you should get started. It really is this idea of like educate yourself in a bunch of different ways. Just get to know the entire investment process. Hang out with other people who are doing that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't go all in. Start small. Mm-hmm. Build your experience just like anything else. And while you're doing it, like just pay attention yeah. to what's happening. What's going on? How do you feel when you get a bad update? Oh, man, I hated mm-hmm. this or that type. Mm-hmm. You know, like... Because you may have an investment strategy walking in and very quickly go, ah, I wasn't into that. 
Oh, like, yeah, that's, for example, that's good to point we out. We flipped a piece of land once in Indiana. Mm-hmm. I remember that. Made a lot of money off of it. Like, a lot of money. Yeah. And I felt like I didn't help anybody. Yeah. All I did was I, I took advantage of asymmetric information in the mm-hmm. market because I had enough cash to just buy this land straight up. Mm-hmm. And then I had the patience to list it and then resell it to someone else who was willing to build and get a mortgage on it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, like, I made like $35,000 on it. Yay. But I, I didn't do anything. Yeah. You, you didn't, know, I didn't help improve anybody. it at all or. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just, it was some arbitrage was yeah. all it was. It's kind of the equivalent of you find something at a garage sale that someone's just getting rid of. You go, oh, cool. Like, I'll buy it. And then you don't even clean it. You just relist yeah, you just it. Like, relist that's it. what I did. Like, that's exactly what I did. Yeah. Just on a much bigger scale. Yeah. And I got done. I was like, eh, it was, it was cool. I mean, I like making money, but I also don't feel like I helped anybody. Mm-hmm. And so I ultimately took all those funds and I put it into a long-term rental yeah. where I'm actually helping out tenants and mm-hmm. helping prove the community. So, yeah. you know. And so I think that's just important to know about yourself. And that's mm. one of the benefits of starting small is you can kind of hone in on yeah. what is my strategy? What Test do I like? Different things. What works for me? I think that's it. So hopefully that's super easy. Um, if you're a beginner, it's not that hard if you're mm-hmm. passively investing. If you're active investing, that's a different game altogether. <laughs> <laughs> that's, oh, man. Yeah. You got to be on up. top of it. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, but if you're doing it passively, I think it's pretty easy. Mm. And I think there's a lot of resources out there to get you – started so that you understand the basics of what's going on. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Nice. That's what I got. I like it. Awesome. I'm glad. And if you (laughs) liked this and enjoyed listening to it, we would really appreciate it if wherever it is that you listen to podcasts, you left a rating. And if you would like to learn more about investing with us and check out some of those cool downloads, like the 196 questions, you can find us online at furlough.com. And so with that, thank you so much for listening and have a great day.